And one of the things I want to talk about is because we, as you know, in Excellium, we have a, um, a strong sort of Murex relationship, is the successes that we've had taking an ISV product, Murex in particular, and putting grid on the back of it. So places where, for example, um, portfolio pricing was taking too long, you have external models perhaps that you want to use, and that a single box just wasn't enough. And in the small, um, typically in the small, I mean in the sort of 20s, 30s, just you can get a massive speed up by taking something that was running for 10 hours, putting it over 10 compute cores. And all right, it, may only, it may run in two hours because you can split it into smaller tasks, some of which uh, will, take half, will, will take half the time. It may run in two hours on 10 cores, but that actually, that's a massive difference, particularly if it was actually taking 12 hours overnight and you get it down to six just by doubling the amount of compute cores. But one of the very first grid and Murex implementations that I was involved in, um, I sat down with the, with the architecture team and they said, we want to put Murex on the grid. I said, well, I'm not sure you can do that. So we want to put our models on the grid and connect them to Murex. I said, okay, we can do that. How big a grid do you want? They said, well, we want two cores. And actually, it made a massive difference. So you know, grid has been adopted. And it, you know, it's not just Murex, but in the Murex case, what has been done is a recognition of the fact that there are really two main grid vendors, um, TIB, TIBCO and Platform Computing, and the ability to connect those pretty seamlessly through what's called the MX grid layer. Now, I don't know if you're aware of the MX grid layer, but essentially what it is is an interface between Murex backend and, um, and, and the grid engines. It allows you to do a translation between, for example, and, and to write and to slot platform um, and to slot data sign apps seamlessly in so that the models can run. And it works not only for your own flex models, but it also works for um, some of the Max libraries as well. And Murex have their own grid called MPC. And I think, I mean, Laurent is here and he'll quite happily say it, it's a good starting point, but it's not a grid in the sense that it has the features of a grid. At most, one submission, uh, large scalability, drives up utilization, high throughput. Um, it's based upon, as I understand it, and Marwan might correct me, but based upon the concepts of, of, uh, of parallel compute, such as MPI, um, but with the idea that it's independent and encapsulated. And of course, Murex, they're, they're, they're not competing in the grid market. They're providing a grid capability for those of you that don't want to purchase data science or platform. But actually, what they really do through MX Grid is provide complete integration with those two. It works like this. There's a piece on the Murex server, um, and there's a piece on the grid engine. And the translation is between them, and essentially allows you to, to use the scheduler um, from any one of these, these uh, vendors. There are some successes, and we've done a lot of implementations of this at different sizes, from 20 cores up to 2,000 cores, with platform computing, with data synapse, using MX grid, and not. There is, and it, it, you know, the message is quite right from Murex that um, yes, of course, you can do this without using MX Grid, but it's not recommended. I'm sure some of you around the table have done, um, and we've certainly helped people with it. But actually, with MX Grid, you get a supported, uh, fully plug and playable, slottable capability. And Murex also has the capability of, in the Max libraries, of splitting calculations out um, so that Greeks and pricing can be done separately. I don't know who that is, possibly Socrates. Actually, interesting enough, I used to work in Greece, and I, uh, I arrived at the, at the place I was working, and I had some problems with my desk, and I went to the, uh, the, the, sort of the boss, and I said, I need someone to fix my desk, and he said, you need to talk to Socrates. I said, yeah, <laughs> of course I need to. <laughs> it would be very nice, I'm sure you can philosophize. It turned out Socrates, or Socrates, is a, is a common name in Greece, and actually it was the name of the caretaker. No, that might be, that's probably Aristotle. Um, the good thing about Murex is that it satisfies, in the case of the Max libraries, it satisfies the uh, characteristics of grid, which are to have encapsulated pieces of work. So all the data is collected in the Murex server, distributed down to the calculation engines. However, what we've done in one of our clients is we've been able to split out the trade and market data and deliver the, tra the market data using a caching technology. I'm using uh, coherence in this case. Um, now, some people often ask me about Murex VAR, since we're talking about this. And uh, the, the answer to Murex VAR on the grid is that 
we have to think about the ways of scaling calculations. And Muret, because VAR uses a lot of data, and because it uses essentially um, very quick pricing methodologies, typically, particularly on the vanilla side, Murex scales its VAR horizontally with a number of instances of Murex. So you can build clusters where you can separate at the, at the Murex server level. However, if you wish to use exotic pricing models or pricing models which are going to take longer or you want to exploit the grid, you can connect that using MX Grid into the VAR process. So the message is quite, quite strongly that Murex, um, there is no sense in putting VAR on the grid in the Murex world. However, it can be parallelized and clustered using standard sort of load balancing technology.